Uh, all right, sir. I think we have uh, some fifty people uh, with us now, so let's not keep them waiting. So, uh, yes. first of all, uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for joining us uh, tonight and discussing this topic on mutual funds, which is the market outlook right now. Uh, I think this is a perpetual question in everybody's mind: where uh, what is the current market outlook? Should we get in the bus? Should we get out of the bus? And this is this is a, an evergreen perpetual question. So, first of all, thank you so much for suggesting this topic and taking out time to uh, discuss it with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me over here. Right. So, so let's get into right into the meat of the matter. We have seen uh, some volatility in the recent past, wherein uh, our markets are sitting at an all-time high. This is first of April, April Fool's Day, and we are sitting at the top of the markets. It some at one point it feels a little scary what's happening, and at the same time we also see uh, we have seen in the just last week itself we saw a sharp uh, down move, and then people were scared, and then we are sitting at the top again. So, what is happening right now is one, and which are the factors which are uh, leading to this current market scenario, according to you? And uh, from here on, also a little bit about, uh, you know, how are, how is the market gonna react, and based on which factors, if you'd help us with that, sir. So, markets should be like ECG chart. If it is a linear line, then you are dead. It better be fluctuating. like there is high tide and low tide in sea there will be ups and downs in the market high tide and low tide are predictable ups and downs of the markets are not predictable now let's look at what market is discounting today as you mentioned correctly we are at all time high it is discounting continuity of bjp government led by prime minister modi it is discounting us at cutting rates somewhere from middle of 2024 it is discounting about 1125 to 1150 rupees nifty eps for march 25 year end it is discounting that israel hamas Russia Ukraine will not go out of orbit and impact energy prices all this events are positively discounted and that's why it is at all time high level now if this events happen as expected by the market then we will see marginal up moves but if there is a shock if some event goes against market expectation then there could be correction this broadly defines today's market now longer term basis indian economy is oasis in the desert we from becoming from being coach of the global growth train are now becoming global growth we and or before we will be adding in next 7 8 years more to gdp than what we have added till last year so undoubtedly people are buying india with a long term view and as of today it gives confidence that they are not going to be disappointed so if you are an investor stay invested for long term and be part of this five year, fifth largest economy to third largest economy journey if you are trader then undoubtedly you will have to be cautious at all time high level as market is discounting a lot of positive things and some of the events may happen against expectation of the market right uh, thank you so much for that sir so uh, second uh, you already mentioned some of the uh, broader uh, market scenarios that are happening globally be the hummers be it the us uh, expectations from us uh, 
uh is do you think is the broader markets are in line with the uh, you know all our market is at an all time high we are living that euphoria right now do you think the broader markets are also experiencing experiencing it or uh, is there a divergence uh, between the indian markets and us and other markets so undoubtedly there is a large divergence between india and its peer group not necessarily us so for example china market when i last looked was trading for x share at three decades back level for 30 years investors in china x share haven't made money russia brazil south africa turkey they are all trading 5 years to 15 years behind in terms of market indian markets have done exceptionally well in last 3 decades which is why we are getting premium valuation we trade at about 21 times earnings china is trading at 1/3 our valuation russia is trading at 1/8 our valuation brazil south africa trading at about half our valuation we are getting this premium because people believe our earnings growth will be superior to those countries our governance standards will be better than those countries and we will be doing green transformation of our economy this 3g of growth governance and green makes india trade at gold standard and china trading at maybe copper or nickel standard we must maintain to maintain this premium valuation to that extent india has differentiated itself these are with its peer albeit in the short term we do get linked with what happens in us and other markets right so uh so my next question uh is about uh, from a from a perspective of an investor of a retail invest uh, specifically uh these market fluctuations are uh, very scary especially for small investors and uh, especially i personally belong to that uh, covid generation where we started investing in you know around the covid period and we we have seen all we have seen is an upward trajectory and every time a shortfall comes this is it it feels like this is it and uh, this in fact whenever there is a like just like last week there was a fall and everybody then suddenly start uh, putting out you know uh, case studies like japan where in since 1991 there was a lull for 20 years and then 20 25 years later it has come back to its original levels uh, such stories can be very scary so my question here is uh, in these volatile situations what should an investor do and how do we one uh, not lose uh, heart and two how do we deal with them so one don't listen to all the whatsapp gyan which is being given if making money was easy all those whatsapp gyan givers would have become billionaire making money is a serious thing it requires lot of discipline and effort warren buffet was once asked that mr buffet there are so many books written on you is there any tarkeeb or skill which people don't know despite all these books because there is no second warren buffet in investments and warren buffet replied i don't think so there is anything which i do is not known to people but people want to become rich very very quickly they don't have patience of warren buffet and hence second warren buffet has not happened it is the discipline and it is the patience which make money for investors timing the market does not make money time in the market makes money when they were 
people are giving examples, try to find out the context. Japan, at one point of time, the asset value had reached to such a crazy level that the palace of the king of Japan in Tokyo was valued at more real estate than entire estate. A small piece of land in Tokyo was valued at more than the state of California. Undoubtedly, such excesses takes time to rebound. In fact, not many people know that Nikkei is not like Nifty calculated on a free flow weighted average market cap. It is a price. It is not market weighted index. So when you want to look at Japan, look at topics, not Nikkei. So don't believe in all those free gyan which is given on WhatsApp. That university is not good enough. As a retail investor, follow three things. One, like the common proverb, little drops of water make an ocean. So you must do regular investment. If you are knowledgeable, do regular investment in direct stocks. And ICICI Direct provides fantastic platform. If not, come via equity mutual fund SIP. Number two, think long term. You are playing for Indian economy growing from four trillion dollar to twenty-five trillion or thirty or thirty-five trillion dollar. Don't get disheartened by some price movement here or there. India is a rising tide. As long as you are sitting in a boat which does not have hole, you will get lifted. Just have patience. Third, be diversified in terms of asset allocation. Last one year, small cap funds performance is fantastic. So don't put all money expecting last one year's return. That's unlikely to happen next year. If you have disciplined asset allocation across debt, equity, real estate, and gold, the portfolio will deliver real return, and you will do well. Right, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, agreed. Uh, we'll we'll do all of that. Now, next thing that we want your opinion on is uh, the sectoral outlooks. Uh, given the current scenario, uh, I think this is a question that uh, everybody is wondering about. Where do I put my money? Which sectors do you think uh, are poised for investment right now? So, one, not losing money is also equal to earning money. So, first, figure out what are avoidable things. If you look at history, the large cap uh, I'm so sorry, sir. We lost your voice uh, at large cap. Hello. This is very very strange and unsustainable. So please stay away. From micro caps, which are trading at valuation much higher than large cap. Number two, stay away from low floating stock counters. There is one PSU bank which trades today at double the valuation of Axis Bank. Both banks are good. Why should one trade at double the valuation of second? Well, it's not fundamentals. Ninety-six point four percent of that PSU Bank's shares are owned by President of India. She doesn't trade in the market daily. Of balance, three point six percent in market. Some are with LIC, some are with banks employee. The real floating stock is less than one percent. With that limited floating stock, any price can be established, any valuation can be set up. But if that bank requires money, will they be able to divest at today's price? Answer is no. 
So stay away from low floating stock counters. Stay away from expensive micro caps which are trading above large cap valuation. Where you should invest from a sectoral point of view, domestic growth will be better than global growth. Domestic focused sectors like cement, real estate, construction, automobiles, they should do well in the days to come. IT and chemical sector are beaten down sector. They may have some pain left, but over next six months, you will get an opportunity to get into IT and chemical, industry, chemical sector also. Uh, for our audience, uh, it's not just me who's going to be able to ask questions. You can ask your questions too. Uh, there's a comment section down below uh, in the space. Please put down your questions. Uh, I'll always give preference to your questions over mine. So uh, get those keyboards tracking and uh, please give your questions in the comments. Sir, uh, in the meanwhile... I wish you if you're speaking, you are on mute. Am I audible from here, sir? Uh, Nilesh, sir, am I audible to you now? Uh, Hi. Nilesh, sir, can you hear me? I hope you were able to hear yes, me. Yes, I was able to hear you, sir. Can you hear me? Uh, I think Twitter is glitching. I'll just uh, give me one second. So Nilesh is just going to join us right back. Uh, I think he's facing some technical trouble there. In the meanwhile, please put down your questions. We'll try to take them up. Hi, hope now you are able to listen to me. Yes, I can hear you. So I could hear you earlier as well. Can you uh, hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. In awesome. between those, I don't know, some error. Yes, yeah, so Twitter gives us those pains at times. Uh, we are so sorry for the <laughs> <laughs> trouble. Uh, all right, we have got some questions from, already started getting some questions from audience, sir. Uh, I'll just quickly cover two or more of my questions and then we'll get to audience questions. Uh, first one is, uh, sir, active versus passive uh, investments in this climate. Uh, we already, you already said, ki timing the market is. It's better to spend time in the market rather than timing the market. But also, about the, should a retail investor churn their uh, portfolio actively, or they should, you know, set a long-term goal and stay with it, or do they really have the means, the research means, the uh, technical outlook, the fundamental outlook to be able to actively uh, manage their portfolio, do you think? 
so my recommendation to every investor will be not to do it yourself you know if you are not uh, knowledgeable enough the best thing is to go to people like icsa direct they have a huge research team which analyzes various funds various asset classes and then they recommend what is suitable to you and what is not i think it makes sense to follow experts in picking up schemes in doing asset allocation and generally going by their advice if there is an investor who just wants one fund which he can invest and forget about it then they should go towards asset allocation fund where fund manager divides between debt equity and precious metal like gold and silver that fund is fill it shut it forget it kind of fund it will keep on doing asset allocation on a professional basis so either you go through mutual fund distributor like icsa direct or go to asset allocation fund that will be the best strategy for you to decide when should you invest how much should you invest where should you invest and when should you do profit booking right uh thank you so much for those words sir uh so my next question is around risk management strategies how can investors leverage different mutual fund categories or asset allocation strategies to manage risk within their portfolios uh and you i know you already said about diversification was one very important point but uh, one how to uh, play that diversification is one and what other strategies if any can be deployed to manage their risk risk is not knowing what you do if you know that if i jump from second floor it's going to injure me and still you decide to jump then that is not risk it's your conscious decision to get injured same way when you look at risk please remember that equity markets will go up as well as down up and down of market volatility of market is not the risk moment you decide to invest in equity you are embracing volatility you can't ignore it you can't stay away from it <coughs> the best strategy about risk is knowing the risk and how you can benefit out of the risk that is something what you have to do right uh great sir so uh now coming let's let's take up a few audience questions sir uh i'll go in i'll try to go, go in chronological order so yeah. first comment was around us treasury uh, 10 year yield hits two week high lasts up 13.1 bps at 4.325% sandeep sir had uh, put it up first so uh, but there was there's no specific question so uh, we'll move ahead uh then sandeep sir asked about ge uh, global geopolitical impact scene which we discussed already uh, then we have uh, manoj sharma sir is that sir which sector can be mainly participants in 8 trillion economy so sir i think this is more for a longer period duration which sectors would be playing well for us so for a 8 trillion dollar economy knowledge sector will be the biggest driver companies which can master technology they will do well now technology is available in every sector if an explosive company can export it explosives to worldwide if it, it if it can make an explosive which has only light and no sound well they will do well as it's seen in the market if there is an auto component company which becomes supplier to toyota for their engine spare part and it's the first company in the world to get that kind of contract certainly it will do well if there is an it company which is cracking ai to deliver better solutions to customers certainly they will do well so focus on knowledge knowledge and knowledge 
technology technology and technology of your investee company an it company using ai will do well right uh, great sir thank you so much for that uh, so next question ramesh sir has asked about textile sector prospects ramesh bhai on textiles there is very limited opportunity if you are a spinner you remain a commodity company if you are fabric maker without garments you don't realize value uh companies which are into fashion they can brand a handkerchief and collect 10 20 times more money than what handkerchief is going to deliver we have to invest in companies which are fully integrated from yarn to fabric to garment especially branded garment all those textile companies which are vertically integrated from yarn to garment they have some chance of doing well right sir uh sir next question is uh, by mr vicky unhone pucha hai ki sir several blue chip stocks like wipro are tightly held with lesser free flow float how should we approach these stocks so vicky by generally you invest in companies where market price or where price is discovered by higher float now wipro undoubtedly is tightly controlled but compared to the past where 90% was with the promoter if i remember correctly now 75% is with the promoter 25% of wipro is still running into tens of thousands of crore and it's a large number so my thumb rule is that any stock where market determined prices and one criteria for that is a large floating stock that is something where one should invest this whole game of getting into highly concentrated holding stocks is not good for long term wealth creation it gives you short term gain and long term pain right thank you so much for that sir uh so next question is by mr nilesh unhone pucha hai ki can bharat be a super power in the next 15 to 20 years what is the definition of super power if it means that our citizens have per capita gdp of america answer is clearly no we are not going to reach to american per capita gdp in next 15 20 years it will probably take 50 75 years plus if super power means a country who will become driver of growth for the world answer is undoubtedly yes as i mentioned earlier we were contributing low single digit 2 to 2 and a half percent to incremental global growth global gdp growth now we are contributing high single digit 6 7 8 so we are becoming powerful and i am sure 15 20 years down the line will be contributing 20 25% of incremental global gdp so it will be your definition of what super power means if it means leading the global growth we will be if it means per capita gdp of american citizens no sadly that will take lot of time right sir uh, so next question is uh, by hvk handle uh, they have asked for uh, railway stock views so again where we have to invest is engineering stocks which are not restricted only in servicing railway companies today people are talking about railway stocks because they have done well but history has taught us that if you are focused only on one segment that's not key to long term wealth creation 
Second, in many railway stock, floating stock is very, very limited. One of the financing company has more shareholders than Asian paints. Now, is that a distribution where there is no institutional investors and operators have sold it to gullible retail investors? Quite likely the case. So my recommendation will be to invest very, very carefully in railway stocks. They all have run up a lot and many of them have very, very limited floating stock and hence today's prices are not necessarily market determined. Right, sir. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so next, uh, Kiran ji ne poocha hai, what is the best way to invest in mutual funds? One year SIP and leave it for three, four years. Uh, likewise, select other funds or is there an even better way? The better way is to invest tied with your investment objective. For example, if you are investing for education of your young daughter, then please have time horizon of 15 to 20 years. If your investment horizon is your son's marriage, which is, let's say, 25 years away, then please have investment horizon of 25 years. If you are investing for your retirement, which is, let's say, 40 years away, then please have investment horizon of 40 years. You don't invest in SIP with a one-year view. You don't invest in SIP with three to four-year view. You tie with your investment objectives. If suppose it's a travel, travel uh, uh, objective, five years down the line, I want to go to do a world tour. Then yes, you can invest into five-year SIP and tie that with your travel objective. So instead of time horizon, tie it with your investment objective. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, so next question is by Ritu Ji. You know, hai, which sector will outperform within Reliance, uh, finance, telecom, gas uh, and energy or retail? So which of the, uh, what is looking good within the Reliance per se group? So if you look at petrochems and fossil fuel, that's a declining business. Global warming will face reduction in fossil fuels and eventually that business will have a sunset. Retail, telecom and hopefully finance will be sunrise or mature sector. It will not be a sunset sector like fossil fuel. In finance, if they follow the same model, model of an existing NBFC, it will be very difficult to scale up. But like they have done disruption in telecom, they do disruption in finance, then certainly they will do well. So I will say we'll have to see how Reliance delivers on knowledge stroke disruption. In telecom, they have already done well. In finance, they have to prove in fossil fuel, gas, energy business, they'll have to transit to renewable energy, new energy, in order to achieve that. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, sir. Uh, so next question is also by Rituji. Uh, the question is your uh, defense sector outlook. Again, in defense sector, companies which are focused on serving Indian military and also global markets will do well. So one filter will be, are they just local players or are they global players? Second will be technology. Are they capable of exploiting technology? If you are going to build an aircraft or a radar, or a gun based on foreign know-how, that's not going to be sufficient. You'll have to absorb that technology and develop next prototype on your own. The third will be floating stock. Some of the defense companies again have very, very low floating stock. That's not going to work well in the longer term. 
defense sectors invariably is linked with current government's policy of banning imports in 120 plus defense items and opening defense sector for private sector. If those policies change, then certainly some of the private sector defense company could be in trouble. So one will have to carefully evaluate in defense sector bottom-up basis which companies will do well. Right. Uh, thank you for that, sir. So next question is by a handle called Hindustani. Uh, they've asked, uh, sir, our portfolio recovered almost 50 to 60 percent from re recent bearish phase. Should we book uh, profits completely and reinvest in different uh, set of stocks portfolio? Bhai, aapne 50 return banaya hai. You are more, no more knowledgeable than me. <laughs> what advice I can give if you have made that kind of money? Please continue to do what you are doing. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, next question, sir, is uh, by Shrikant Ji. He has asked, do you think uh, ETF is getting mature compared to mutual funds? I think this whole maturity debate between ETF and mutual fund is not appropriate. We manage active funds like our left eye and we manage our ETFs and index funds like our right eye. For me, I have to do well in both. My governance standards remains the same for both. My execution also remains equal for both. I don't really discriminate one against another. I put as much effort in my active funds as I put in passive funds. It's like a restaurant. You know, all dish are prepared with the same vigor, same quality standards. Now, sometimes people prefer masala dosa. Sometimes people prefer pasta. But mere liye to masala dosa or pasta dono banane mein utni mehnat lagti hai. Right. Perfect, sir. Uh, next, sir, uh, Abhijit, sir, had asked, uh, this decade will belong to which sector, which we already discussed, I think, in the 8 trillion economy question. Next, we have Lavina ji. Uh, they've asked, uh, can, uh, in, can invest in sector theme mutual fund? What action need to take for small and mid-cap mutual fund? Uh, can invest fresh amount now if yes, SIP good or lump sum investment? So I think... Uh, Broadly, we sectors we have discussed. This is a three four part qu uh, question. So sectors we have discussed. Uh, so uh, can you invest? Uh, market so outlook Lavinaji, we have, uh, my invest. recommendation will be, if you have connection with Kumkarna as your purvaj, then yes, you can invest lump sum, which means you invest today and wake up after fourteen years to watch what happened. Now most of us does not have any connect with. Kumpkarna. We wake up in the middle of the night to watch what has happened to our portfolio. So for us, instead of lump sum, SIP is always better. Right. Perfect, sir. Uh, this will be last question. I have another meeting. All right. Sure, sir. So uh, I'll, I'll actually go on to ask you uh, the final question of the day, which is one piece of advice which you would like to leave our listeners with, sir. One, keep faith in India's story. It's a fantastic time we are born. We are truly in our Amrit Kal. We are witnessing India's transformation from being coach or dibba of the global growth train to becoming engine of the global growth train. From 12th largest economy in 2010 to 10th largest economy in 2014 to 5th largest economy in 2023 to 3rd largest economy maybe before 2030 is indeed a great, great, great achievement. Stay invested in India growth story. Don't short India. Don't bet against India. 
this was amazing sir thank you so much for uh, giving us time and uh, one final request please do allow us to host you again and learn more from you definitely i look forward to that thank you thank you so much for your time sir and thank you audience for joining in we'll be back with more such sessions thank you for joining in have a good day bye bye thank you take care bye